Hello, my name is Alex Polvey and I'm the CEO of CoreOS. Today I'm going to be showing you our product Tectonic, which is a commercial distribution of Kubernetes, and particularly a new project we've been working on called Stackinetes, which is using Kubernetes to deploy OpenStack. So why would we do this? Well, when you look at hyperscale deployments like Google, you have every piece of your infrastructure deployed uh, through containers. Even things like Google Cloud, which is an infrastructure as a service layer, is deployed inside of containers running on top of a shared container management platform known as Borg. Well, with Tectonic, we help companies bring Google's infrastructure for everyone else built around Kubernetes. So in this case, we think of OpenStack just as another application that can be deployed on your infrastructure, just like anything else you might need to run. So what we'll show you in this demo is we have a bare metal cluster. It's working on our partner's cloud, packet.net. This is an actual physical bare metal server. This means we're able to do one full end-to-end -end trusted computing, which is a unique capability of Tectonic, as well as get direct access to Intel VT, which allows us to have fully accelerated hypervisors running inside of containers. So what you'll see is a fully containerized OpenStack, as well as an upstream OpenStack combined with upstream Kubernetes. So overall, what I'm going to show you are the capabilities that we have once we bring these together. This includes a dynamic management of the OpenStack cluster itself. It allows you to do self-healing uh, of the OpenStack control plane components, as well as demonstrate painless upgrades, really showing the benefits of Kubernetes and managing OpenStack using it. So let's jump right into it. What I have here is a standard upstream horizon interface. This is the dashboard that ships with upstream OpenStack. Uh, you'll see here I have one compute node um, in the cluster. And if I now jump over here uh, into the node list, here are our six servers that are running on the bare metal provider. So again, this is the Tectonic Management Console, which gives you a lens um, of the bare metal server infrastructure that's running behind the scenes. If we come over here to pods, you'll see a few things. First, we have Horizon. Uh, Horizon, this is the, the representation of the container that's actually powering this dashboard right here. Additionally, you'll see the compute node, which is running right here, and this is the representation of this hypervisor node. I'm going to go ahead and launch a new compute node uh, to demonstrate the dynamic ma management capabilities in all of this. And to do this, I simply label a machine app equals compute. In this case, I'm saying I want this node in my cluster to be running um, a OpenStack hypervisor. You'll see that this compute node already popped up and is running inside of containers. While that's coming up, I wanted to explain kind of how the containers work um, inside of Kubernetes. So the base object within Kubernetes is a pod. And right now we are looking at the pod for the, the Nova compute. Nova compute itself is an agent that lands on the servers and it includes things such as the hypervisors, the networking agents, and everything that you need in order to add a new compute node uh, to an OpenStack cluster. So if we scroll down, you'll see that there's actually a set of containers. One thing that, that is different than a, a container and a pod is that a pod can have many containers in it. Now most pods have just one container in it, but in the case of this Nova Compute one, you see that we have a Nova Compute container. Um, the image could be found right here. We have libvirt running inside of a container. This is what will be used to spawn the virtual machines and so on. So as we can see, this, this pod is up and running now. We can jump into the logs and, and check out how things are coming online. Uh, it, looks like, it looks like the service is, is just about online. Um, and we can check back here and see kind of all the different parameters that we need to get this running. So now if I come over here to the actual hypervisor list inside of Horizon, I should be able to see our new, our new hypervisor running. I refreshed it and there it is. And now you can see that the total cluster has expanded. So that's great. Let's go and check out if we can actually launch a server here. So I'm going to go into this and uh, launch a new instance. I'm going to call this one Austin, as that's where I'm recording this video for you today. Uh, we will launch an m1.small, we'll add a network. Now keep in mind, everything required to launch this instance is in containers, including the hypervisor uh, required to boot this instance. So we see it spawning, and it should be coming online momentarily. Now we can jump back over to the, um, to the Kubernetes side of this, and we will see you should see some log streaming by here of, of this instance coming online. Um, and here it is. 
it's a little bit hard to see, but the point is that there's a lot of logs in here of this node coming online. All right, now we're up and running. Let's click into it and just see how it's doing. We launched a core OS machine. I'm gonna just pull up the console here and sure enough, there we go. Echo, hello, um, echo, hello world. Okay, it's alive. So we brought our machine online um, and all of this again is running inside of containers, including the hypervisor itself. So now let's demonstrate some of the self-healing capabilities um, of when you run the, your infrastructure this way. So right now I have a, an instance running um, of Kubernetes uh, that has you know, these six nodes going. You'll see if I come to this pod list, we have kind of all the different pods required to run OpenStack. If you're familiar with OpenStack, you'll notice a lot of these names, Glance, Horizon, the Keystone API, and so on. Uh, and a lot of these can be deployed um, as simple state stateless services that can, that can float around the infrastructure. The stateful services can also be ran on this infrastructure. Uh, it's a little bit uh, different setup, but nonetheless, every single component of OpenStack can be ran this way. So in order to demonstrate um, the ability to do self heal and clusters, you'll see here that uh, we have all of these pods running particularly on this machine. So I'm going to label a node um, here, app equals uh, non-persistent compute control. We'll label that here. And I'm going to drop the label from this machine. What this is going to do is um, pretend as if that this node came offline and you're going to see workloads automatically be rescheduled between the two. So here's, here's our new one. Um, okay, this is all looking good. So I'm gonna go up here and launch a new, or go ahead and delete a pod. Deleting a pod is simulating this node crashing. So in this case, I'm gonna take down the Nova API in and of itself. And you'll see it pretty much instantly is rescheduled over here and is already up and running. Um, to do one a little bit more sophisticated, we'll do Horizon itself. Um, so we're doing Horizon, which means you see this now goes into terminating state and these come up here into uh, running state. We can go and check on Horizon and see how this is actually coming up and running. We're, we'll get the full pod overview of everything going on in this, um, in this particular pod. Again, in this case, Horizon only has one container running. Um, it doesn't need to have multiple containers kind of co-scheduled to it. We'll go check the logs, see how it's coming online. It looks like it's, um, it's doing well. Um, so if all works correctly here, um, we should see my, uh, my, my Horizon instance here log out um, and meaning a new, a new one has been deployed. So I'm gonna just click here I cause one second, there we go, boom, it logged out, meaning that I am now uh, running this instance of, of Horizon that's been migrated to another machine, and you can see that everything is online again. And remember, every component inside of OpenStack can be met, made to be self-healing this way. Uh, we're demonstrating particularly with Horizon as it's the most easy thing to show. All right, the last little piece I'd like to show here are around uh, the ability to do upgrades. So I have a Horizon here now that is V3, and you'll notice there's Horizon V2. Any application that's deployed with the label app equals Horizon is what will appear uh, over here. So if I go into Horizon V3 and modify this desired count up to one instance, and then scale down uh, Horizon V2, um, what this is uh, doing is showing how you can do rolling upgrades of, of an application from one version to the next. Um, so we see here that this node is now terminating, uh, this one is creating. And in a production deployment, you would do multiple uh, instances of this and layer them together. Again, for purposes of this demo, just wanted to show how you could have um, you know, different versions running and, and simply turn up and turn down. So we can, we can check out Horizon here and see how it's going. It appears that the container is currently downloading. Um, so we'll give it one second to get going. Okay, we see that our Horizon V3 container is now running. And if I go over here to the logs, we should see it's up and running here. And then again, I'm going to refresh and the expected behavior is it's going to log me out as I just deployed a new version. And that's how we're showing that's new instances. And ta-da, 
And in this case, in Horizon V3, we swapped the logo out to be with Intel, our partner that's been helping us with this project as well. So again, we've demonstrated full um, containerized all components, dynamic management, self-healing, as well as painless upgrades. And these can be applied to all components within OpenStack. Thank you for viewing this. If you'd like to find out more information, uh, feel free to follow up with one of these locations.